The United Auto Workers Union expands its strike to 38 new facilities nationwide as it continues its contract talks with the big three automakers. Here's a look at the picket line now in Pontiac. In a few minutes, we're going to hear from some workers about what they think about the strike and the UAW's demands and announcements from earlier this morning. Let's check in with Kim. An absolutely perfect end to the work week, kicking off the weekend, which fall arrives this weekend, but feeling a lot more like summer. In fact, a few cities back to 80 degrees today. We'll talk about how long this warm weather will last and also our next chance for rain in a couple of minutes. Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News First at 4 starts now. Good to have you with us here at 4. I'm Devin Skillian in for Karen Drew. Topping today the news, a massive move by the UAW. Union President Sean Fain saying in a social media update that the union is now targeting more than 30 Stellantis and General Motors locations, a move affecting about 5,000 workers at parts distribution facilities. The union right now not targeting Ford with these new strike moves. Fain says the union has made some progress with Ford over the past week, but that there is still quite a ways to go. Ford releasing this statement about the talk saying our focus is on negotiating a deal that rewards our employees allows for the continuation of Ford's unique position as the most American automaker and enables Ford to invest and grow. We have more work ahead of us before we can reach an agreement. When it comes to General Motors and Stellantis, union leadership has been very unsatisfied, obviously, with the amount of progress made, prompting today's moves. Sean Lay outside one of those targeted GM facilities. He's at the Pontiac Distribution Center. Sean. Pontiac Distribution Center and folks walking out off the job at noon today, even a little bit before noon. Of course, in the first few hours of a strike, lots of enthusiasm. Unclear how long this one will go. This place was out in 2019, Devin, for 45 days. So a lot of the people you see with signs here were involved in that strike as well. Saying 45 days was pretty long. Things started getting pretty tough at the kitchen table paying the bills. But Devin, as you mentioned, uh, UAW today, here and across the country, hitting GM Hard and Stellantis, and you'll no new action against Ford. Here's the latest. No contract, no work. Local four cameras are here as the very first UAW workers walked off the job even before the noon starting time here at GM's redistribution center in Pontiac. No one here telling us they were surprised when UAW head Sean Fain read off the list of GM and Stellantis facilities the UAW is now calling on to strike. UAW head Sean Fain calling on UAW members to strike 38 GM and Stellantis facilities across 20 states, including several here in Metro Detroit. No new action is being taken against against Ford. Fain says talks there are moving forward. The major sticking points with GM and Stellantis are focused on wage increases. In some cases, the UAW wants more than a 40% wage increase and decreasing work hours to a 32-hour work week. Job security, uh, there's a lot. Wages, uh, cost of living allowance, uh, I mean, there's, the list goes on and on. Retirement security, I mean, they've really not answered any of those things. Back here live on the picket line here in Pontiac. Everyone here saying the same thing, really on the same page as Sean Fain saying, wages in the tier system. They want wages up, they want the tiered system gone. They were very pleased to see Ford getting rid of the tiered system, and that's what they're going to be out here fighting for today. Devin, big picture here, you talk about redistribution parts. This is where the Teamsters bring in parts here. These men and women sort the parts and get them where they need to go, primarily dealerships. This is meant really to bring the customer in, Devin, because if you're waiting on a part for your GM car and it's not there, you're going to be concerned about that. Back to you. That's a great point, Sean. Exactly right. All right, more from Sean coming up as we continue through our block of news this afternoon. Let's now get over to a targeted Stellantis facility. That's a warehouse in Centerline where Mara McDonald joins us. More, more on what she's hearing from the strikers there. Mara. Hi, Devin. In a word, excitement. Take a look. These workers have been out. Gave the word at what we've seen play out today is a vast expansion of these targeted strikes, especially here in Michigan. Overall, the UAW has hit seven Stellantis facilities in Michigan and six GM facilities. It's all solidarity. It's all solidarity, no matter which plant, what location. We have presently have three locations that's already been out there carrying a heavy load for all of us. 
so everyone else has got to help with the load. In watching Fain's various addresses to the membership over the last three weeks, it's clear some supported an all-out strike shutting everything down at once. But what Fain did was start small. We knew more strikes were coming. The question was how many. The answer today, a lot. Workers here in Centerline at Stellantis' packaging and warehouses share the same optimism we've seen from workers picketing in Wayne. They want to be here, and they don't think this strike is going to last long. I'm excited. My people are excited. We're ready to take this fight to the company. Back here live, Devin, I think it's pretty clear that the word today or for the day is parts. That's exactly what the UAW is targeting here. It's not trying to shut down engine plants or anything like that. It is trying to target parts, trying to target the direct customer, meaning I drive a Ford, you know, you, you drive, other people drive GM and Chrysler. If something happens and you've got to go to the dealership, is that part going to be there? Now, these companies have said that they have you know, contingency plans in place. Let's see how this rolls. Right. We're live in Centerline. I'm Mara McDonald, Local 4. Yeah, that's what we saw with the first three plants, trying to create these pinch points and now a huge expansion of that. All right, Mara. As the automotive strike dominates national headlines, another UAW strike is still happening here in Michigan. More than 1,000 Blue Cross workers represented by the union have walked off the job after their contract expired last week. The union says it's fighting against job outsourcing and wage disparities. So we'll keep you updated on all of these UAW matters both on air and online at clickondetroit.com. Head there to see the detailed updates on the talks and where they stand. You can also find an interactive map now showing you every strike location across the country and they do go from uh, C to C now. We'll have uh, more of our team coverage coming up here on Local 4 News at 5 and 6. All right, let's get our first look at the forecast. Kim, we have had such a lovely stretch here lately. Continues. Usually when we have a nice stretch, there are changes ahead, but not really any big changes in our future. 78 at City Airport, upper 70s in Pontiac. It is 79 in Howell and a couple cities in the 80s, including Lansing and also in Adrian. If you're headed to the four frenzy game of the week, it's Dakota and Chippewa Valley, a big game tonight. Seven o'clock temperatures will be in the 70s, but dropping down into the 60s. So we'll get a little bit chilly by eight or nine o'clock. And then by midnight tonight, we're into the the low 60s for tomorrow. Sunshine returns a great start to the weekend. Couple degrees cooler, but still warmer than normal with a high of 75. Now fall officially arrives tomorrow, but it's not going to feel like fall until next week. We'll talk about those cool temperatures next week coming up. All right, Kim. The clock continues to tick in the nation's capital. We are now just seven days away from a possible government shutdown. The fiscal year ends September 30th at midnight, and with tensions brewing within the GOP, the chances of coming to terms on a plan right now seem to be dwindling. Kimberly Gill joins us now. Uh, KG, small group of Republicans right now seem to be holding up the deal. Hi, Devin, you're right. Yeah, a group of conservative Repo Republicans are demanding major spending cuts, and without them, they won't make a deal. So. House Republicans backing away from a deal struck with President Biden earlier this year. They're demanding steep spending cuts of roughly $300 billion, slashing budgets, including education, nutrition, and environmental programs. But this week, they've struggled to pass anything at all. The stalemate frustrating even fellow House Republicans. Still, House Speaker Kevin McCarthy says he's confident a deal can be reached. I think we've made some progress to those who have been holding up passing the rule to get onto these bills. We wanted to do it individually rules, but I guess we do like a minibus rule. We got rules um, gonna go in today. We got members working and uh, hopefully we'll be able to move forward on Tuesday to pass these bills. McCarthy says he won't give the hardliners more leverage in the negotiations and their threats to stop funding troops and border security will not help them win. McCarthy added he still hopes to work within his party to get legislation passed instead of reaching across the aisle. So he says they will continue to meet to discuss ways to meet and to keep the government funded and expects them to take action next week. Devin. Yeah. All right, Kim. An agreement could be near as talks between the Writers Guild of America, the Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Producers and Executives. Now uh, their talks entering a third straight day. The group's meeting again today, according to a spokesperson for the Writers Guild. But this strike, as you know, has paralyzed the entertainment industry. 
High level talks though continue with the major studio heads, so there has been hope for some progress. We'll keep an eye on what's going on in Hollywood as well. Prosecutors have charged a man who they say murdered his girlfriend. Prosecutors say 56 year old Maurice Allison strangled his girlfriend, 33 year old Stacy Davis, earlier this week. Police were dispatched to a home on Fence Street for a reported overdose. But when they arrived, they found Davis dead and signs of blunt force trauma to her head. Allison was arrested Tuesday, and has been charged now with first degree murder. New Jersey Senator Robert Menendez and his wife have been indicted on bribery charges. According to the Justice Department, the New Jersey Democrat and his wife Nadine received hundreds of thousands of dollars in bribes and used the senator's influence to enrich several businessmen as well as the Egyptian government. A couple allegedly received cash, gold bars, payments toward a home mortgage, a luxury vehicle, several other items of value. Menendez and the other defendants are scheduled to appear in court on Wednesday.